Greetings, loyal citizen. Friend Computer welcomes you back to Dungeon Complex. You may recall from our previous recording that Love RBOY2, Gibson RHKD2, Mac RDOS2, and Roger RRUN2 were cleaning treasonous graffiti in service to Alpha Complex, but after a minor mishap, Love RBOY3, Mac RDOS3, and Roger RRUN3 were sent to replace their clone siblings in order to complete their mandatory bonus duty. After the completion of that semi-successful mission, Mac RDOS3 served his role in R&D, avoided a dorm explosion and a cafeteria fight before he was taken by internal security for questioning but was eventually released for troubleshooting duty. We now rejoin our troubleshooters as their mission is in progress. Hello loyal citizens, meet Bebop ROC1, recently promoted to Red Clearance for information that helped INSEC officers discover groups of registered mutants gathering illegally and likely conspiring against Alpha Complex. But due to interference from this nefarious group of traitors, Friend Computer requires a clandestine group of troubleshooters to go undercover and infiltrate this group to gather information on Alpha Complex's behalf. This mission is of he at most importance but is also classified top secret by interior security so for the duration of this mission and likely after, friend computer and any citizens with knowledge of this mission will disavow said knowledge. Exposing the mission will only lead to you being branded a traitor, so for the safety and security of yourself and Alpha Complex, details of this mission must be kept secret. Friend Computer thanks you for your cooperation. Your assignments for this mission are as follows. Bebop ROC1, Team Leader. Gibson RHKD2, Loyalty and Communications and Recording Officer. Love RBOY3, Happiness and Hygiene Officer. Mac RDOS3, Equipment Officer. No badges will be provided for obvious security reasons. You don't need no stinking badges. You will now be connected with your briefing officers. Upon completion of this mission, please return here for debriefing. The eye of the computer still watches over you, of course, but the vid screen of changes from the computer eyeball to a view screen being connected by camera to your briefing officers. And so you see on the vid screen, basically crotch up to neck. You got torso of three orange uniforms. In a five in any way, they're just standard orange uniforms with the fleck armor over the top. Orange or fleck. None of them look overly masculine or feminine. One looks feminine, two looks masculine. But other than that, there's nothing very discernible about their features. One of the masculine bodies does look taller than the other, but only slightly. We'll now give you the rest of your mission details. The first one seems to be the one most in charge. In the middle, the shorter of the two masculine figures. You're gonna go undercover, all as registered mutants. In this mission, only one of you can be in your normal red clearance garb. The rest of you need to dress down. You'll need to re remove any red clearance garb you have on, and it's underneath it, you probably have your old clothes from your, li your old life. Your black outfit's probably on underneath, and if not, they can provide black pants, black shirt, black socks, whatever you need. Inform them now. Bebop gets to stay in the red garb, and the rest of you have to wear black garb. So you guys can go ahead and strip down now. Some slots will open on the walls that you'll have to use your tongue print, but they'll say that there's space provided for you to store your things here. But you as well, Bebop, you're all provided with a storage space here to leave any belongings behind you need for this mission. The officer will also inform you, not carry anything on, on you that would give away the fact that you're not infrared as your dress is, if your dress is infrared. And uh, for you, Bebop, to not carry too much on you that would give away any sense of status beyond what a mutant would have. Well, you're a mutant, so you probably don't have anything like that, but just in case. And they're going to issue all of you registered mutant armbands to wear. You don't already have one. If you're a registered mutant, you do. It's only two of you. Um, so two of you will be issued registered mutant armbands. Yeah, all right. So, uh, Across from you, Bebop, is Mac Ardos, the only other actual registered mutant among you. He's already wearing an armband, but he'll take off his red gear, of course, and wear whether black gear he would like to be wearing. And then your two non-registered mutants, here to be Love R and Gibson R, who will now remove their red gear and put on a uh, registered mutant after tongue printing in the desired slots. Yeah, Gibson's quite furtive about his act. You're not actually being demoted, but you're going undercover as if you were. You have to act, you're going to have to act as if you were infrared citizens, of course. For both of you guys, that's a very big downgrade in status for sure. Yeah, no, I'm very furtive about my strobing store and all of my items. It's sure for the service of Frank Peter, it's a I mean, clandestine yeah. mission, yeah. They really need you guys for this because because of some information they got from Bebop, they were able to infiltrate this group of registered mutants who are gathering secretly. You guys need to go undercover as them, and Bebop's going to lead you as the information. 
So they've arranged for an auto car to deliver you guys there or to the location where you guys are going to hop a transfer. They're going to tell you all the information you need to get to where you're going after you've changed your outfits. You're going to be issued some equipment and even among that, they're going to issue some standard troubleshooting equipment and they'll say even among that, you might want to leave some of that behind. And what you do take with you, you're probably going to want to hide on yourself as best as possible. I'm going to leave everything except for my have we been ever issued a hygiene kit yet? Bought one. one. Yeah, it's a personal. Uh, Is it a uh, red hygiene kit? You have to. fellow mutant. <laughs> yeah, Gibson laughs too. <laughs> I <laughs> laugh too. <laughs> so all of you dressed in infrared will leave back, leave behind anything that will give away your, your clearance level, your actual real clearance level. Yeah, I'll leave everything except uh, my grenade. You want to stealth that away on your your person somewhere? Yeah, do I have pockets? You can roll. You can go ahead and roll a stealth check to pocket it, and just or even try to stuff it down in your pants, like in your balls or something. Like, tell me what you where you want to hide it, and then roll stealth. Yeah, I don't really think I want a uh, grenade in my near, balls. All right, so, this, so just in your pocket. I roll a six out of seven to stealth it in my pocket. All right, it's in there, and I'll consider that number for later, so just remember that's how well stealth it is of a, a one. Anyone else want to stealth anything away they're not leaving behind? I don't have anything to secretly stow away or anything like that, but I'm going to leave behind my red laser pistol and that red armor, but I'll keep my basic so that doesn't have any distinct color or markings yeah. on it. Having a utility belt as an infrared citizen just means you have a job that requires that. Is that you have any tiny things like you didn't leave Whatever it behind, you have, I have it. Lived, yeah, yeah. I, I take most of you have gone pretty much bare belongings. Except Bebop who gets to keep whatever stuff you've got, Bebop, because you're red clearance and you're allowed. As long as you're not armed to the teeth, it won't look suspicious. So that's basically saying don't go in there too crazy. I don't think you have too much just in the fire or well, we have firepower, so. I got my pistol, my armor, yeah, a couple other items. I don't have nothing too crazy though. And now, Nothing I wouldn't carry around normally. And now the larger of the three briefing officers is going to inform you that a modified doc bot, recently altered by R&D to be a barber bot, something they're testing out, may be able to replace citizen barbers, freeing those citizens up for different types of labor. So they're going to test this new barber bot out on you guys because you need disguises. Because someone might have seen you in your red clearance gear before, so they're going to advise anyone that wears glasses to maybe remove the glasses, anyone with facial hair to maybe get that removed, be able to add Add extensions into your hair or make your hair shorter. And this uh, this doc bot will also be delivering all the equipment because they don't want you to go to PLC for this stuff. This stuff's been uh, requisitioned for you and is being delivered. If you want to swing by PLC on your mission before you get in the auto car, do it fast because there's a time limit on this mission, of course, like most missions. when you have to get there while these mutants are still gathering. So don't waste any time. If you need to swing by PLC, just be, wor you know, be warned that only your red officer can probably carry a lot of things you're going to acquire there. Barber bot's going to come in, dragging behind it a cart full of items. You guys want to do haircuts or items first? Whatever our team leader thinks is good. Do hair first. You don't need a haircut, of course, because you don't, no, no. you're fine as you are. But do you think any yeah. of your other citizens need haircuts? You guys can describe yourself, and then uh, you as team leader, if you want, can maybe decide what needs to be done, and then either you or someone else can activate this bot to do that. Doc bot operation and maintenance role for one of your your crew to operate this dock bot to give the desired haircuts, but you team leader can pick out the haircuts if you like. Bebop, you can decide with which citizen you would like to start and how you'd like to alter their appearance, so. I'm looking at Lovar first. What do I see about Lovar's appearance? Presenting female with like my hair pulled up in a bandana thing around. But yeah, long hair, muscly built lady. Her hair is brown. First thing that comes to mind is that she normally presents with long hair. She should get a haircut. Razor or just a couple inches off, like a bob, like where where we landed on the length of that hair. Pretty low cut buzz. Can this barber bot generate hair? Yeah, this barber bot can do can generate hair as well. Can do yeah, braids can we and stuff like that. Bar and a mustache? Yeah, we can add a mustache. It can do some spray on hair for that. Yeah, or at least try to. Do. Same color mustache as Lover Boy's natural hair, I assume. Back back okay. e back ER right here. Here. Loves that equipment. Give her a buzz cut and then see if you can figure out a mustache. Roll me a doc bot operation. I turn to the team leader. I give him a hearty handshake. And I say it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to perform. I just shook his hand like all normal individuals here do. I wipe my hands clean. And then I say, I would love to, and it'd be an honor to do it. And then I completely do not do it. I rolled an 11. Doc pot, operation, and maintenance, a uh, level that I have is a 2. It's a fail of 9. So it's not going to go the way intended at all. So instead, that love, you're going to have a flat top now. It's going to shave your eyebrows. And instead of giving you a mustache, it's going to give you, like, uh, mutton chops. No eyebrows. That's your look. Right? Uh, see, I'm like, wow, we're going to be so undercover now. This turned out better than... Than I yeah, it's, it's way and better. It's not like to your orders, team leader, so you can make him do it again, or it, well, you can do whatever you want. She does look way different. Hopefully, you'll accept. You my, would never recognize uh, her with this haircut. 
presentation done in the name of our beloved Frank Computer. Mac took a little liberty with that one. Are you okay with that, or do you want me to try again? She turned out to look completely different from what I instructed. Bebop's gonna give Mac Carr a little bit of a look. Well, I'm a little bit displeased with that, but, I mean, it's the same difference, because she looks completely different than what she used to. Okay, I'm gonna take note that, uh, order is Does it follow orders? Like, Alright. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna note it. Well, maybe he'll have better luck next time on Gibson R, which you have to do next, because if, if Mac's operating the machine, he can't operate the machine for himself. So you're gonna have to find someone else to do it for Mac R, of course. Mac R could do it for Gibson. Gibson, go ahead and describe yourself, and then we'll let him later decide how he wants you to look. Gibson is stylish as fuck. Sort of like a bit of wavy hair, dark skin, elegant little uh, goatee and mustache going on. He looks quite rakish and roguish all the time, even when he's smiling all the time. It's like a Lando Calrissian looking dude, right? He does look like a little like Lando That was my uh, impression Calrissian. of your character, yeah. is Lando. I'm gonna instruct Mac R. Well, I'm gonna try and simplify the instructions. Time. Make him completely hairless in the head. Take take all his hair off. Bald, no facial hair. Gibson R gives his friend Macar a pointed look. <laughs> Is there a way that instead of like actually using the barber bot, the new and re- Barber bot, I can try and operate it a different way. You mean like manually? Maybe we don't have correct instructions because R&D it can be has crazy. to go through lots of different trials. We don't know what really works. So maybe it's a problem with the bot, and I really want to do a good yeah. job. You can keep trying with Doc Bot, or because it's been altered, you can try to use the Jack Bot roll. Okay, well, this time I got a three. It still fails because your number's a two, right? Yeah. It doesn't fail that bad. It only fails by one. You're not hairless, Gibson, but you're pretty close. It gave it a pretty gotcha. close shape. It's like if the, uh, you know, when the guard's like on a one instead of a zero. I'm just gonna go ahead and apologize. This needs to be better tested. So as equipment officer, I'm just gonna make some notes that I would like for you to sign upon that this bot obviously needs some fine tune. All right, but now it's your turn for a haircut unless you want to improve, but this one was pretty good. This one is pretty much to your liking. Like, there's a shade of the mustache and goatee, and there's a shade of the hair from his head. Way better than what he did for love. But now it's Mac's turn, and like I said, you can't operate the machine for yourself, so someone else has to operate it, or you have to convince them to do it manually, if that's what you would like to do. Neither of you guys have, have any uh, skill in, in, in operating a dog bot. Gibson yeah, replies a simple, no, clearly a little pissed at his haircut. Even though he's still smiling. It All might be right, higher a little bit. Uh, oh, plus, I'm just not gonna do it. Bebop, you should be the one to try it. Seems odd someone would pass up an ability to try and impress or. So you're gonna ask this. Gibson to show off for you? Yeah, so I'm gonna. Let's I'm see going how you to do ask then. Gibson. Offer. Matt gave you a haircut, now you can give Mac a haircut, so maybe you'll be even now. So let me put you back on a level playing field. I like that. This is a team building exercise. Everybody cuts everybody else's hair. Well, I have like kind of a crew cut that is neatly slicked with completely hygienic hair product. Everything else is completely bare and clean shaven except a finely groomed little handlebar mustache. Almost waxed have mustache. Waxed mustache. And you're wearing glasses. Focus. I think that's important yeah, I, that you're wearing I, glasses. Focus. So you can always take off the glasses um, to disguise him as well. It might impair his vision. But... Gibson, I need you to do two things to Mac. That mustache has to go. Ken, give him the nastiest set of dread. Yeah, I'd like to employ stealth to make it seem like I'm using the machine when I'm really not. I rolled a uh, three. Gibson successfully pretends to press buttons, but the machine does nothing. I put on a big show of it, I say, must be broken, boss. Give me a fast talk. All right, that's a two out of three. And I'm going to be like, ah. No, I'm gonna uh, expand my notes. Clearly, this this machine is malfunctioning. We're not ready to roll out the barber bot. We need to Maybe wait. Only I, someone from I wasn't on the project. Do it, no, so I wasn't have on to there. Give it's like one of those things, like with a camera, with a timer, you gotta like press the buttons and like run to get in place in time. But that's gonna be way more difficult if I Mac mean, has to do it worth himself. A shot, though, because it only worked for the person who actually works in R&D, so maybe you should give it a try. Uh, let's try that, Mac. All right, Mac, like, you get to program your own haircut now. You can either roll to do the haircut team leader desires, or you can secretly, with a stealth roll, roll the haircut you desire. You know what, I'm just gonna try to do the same thing he did. Try to use stealth to see like I'm trying to operate the machine in it. It's not working? Work. Alright, so roll a stealth to pretend like you are pressing buttons. It's, for some reason, I just can't get a haircut. And then, of course, I try to manually cut it with scissors in my own hands afterwards. As, you know, I'm not going to disobey. So I rolled a four. Oh, yeah, well, your stealth's great. So you totally pull that off. So Macar is also <laughs> having trouble getting the machine to work. He does offer to do it manually. Do you want to let him cut his hair manually? Or do you want love to try? Or do you want someone else to do it manually for him? That's kind of your call as team leader. I'm just trying to erase that tiny little mark on my performance away from the record with all of this now overwhelming evidence and it wasn't my fault. Well, I'm gonna ask Love to try and give Mac this uh, makeover, but to do it manually instead of relying on the controls. Does it seem like there's something 
thousand year old machine if two of these guys can't work it. Someone want to try and turn it off so it doesn't respond to her trying to move its arms? Can that be done easily? Is that a whole other thing? It's just a roll for someone. Someone's got to roll a Doc Bot or Jack Bot that succeeds for that to happen. It's the same roll. It's the same roll we're trying to do for the haircut, but someone's got to do it to turn it off. I mean, as the equipment officer, maybe Macar should turn it off and then I'll manually cut his hair with the scissor arms. I'm suggesting, not telling. I'm going to take note that love seems to be about traditional role play, but not about following orders to the exact letter. I rolled a 17, and my mechanical skill base is... Five. Yeah, so no. <laughs> so you're, you're trying to cut it off for a haircut. Turn it off. That's what I was supposed to do, right? All right, it's not going to turn off. It's going to try to do the last program haircut, which was the same one that was programmed for Gibson, on Macar. So roll lower than your agility. I needed a 10. I got a 12. So you're unable to jump out of the way. So this thing's going to cut your hair the exact same way as Gibson RHKDs. Not completely oh, bald. Barely. Guard one. So like near bald facial and head hair. So you your mustache is still there, but much thinner. Your hair is still there, but nearly bald. Speaking of the uh, hygiene officer, he brings up a good point, you know, with all this cutting and malfunctioning and maybe some of us have a couple of nips uh, that has a little bit of blood, this, this right now, we're treasonous right now, so do we need to get like some slips from our hygiene officer saying that this is okay right now because we're going as sully infrared or, or blacks? But the hair Are you is all suggesting over. that not maintaining a proper, a proper fur is uh, hygienic? That's treasonous. No, I'm saying that I... I'm you, are you afraid that you're covered in hair and you need to wash? Is that what you're saying? I'm afraid that we're all right now covered in hair and, and I fear for the wrath of the hygiene officer. So I need to know, like, do we have anything that we can cleanse ourselves with? Or is there, like, a, a, a permission here. slip that says this is okay right now? This hair... Do you want to test this one to see if you're too dirty? Because DocBot brought in a car behind it. Are, so... Are we going... Our business. In the cart for the equipment, in, in case your head officer wants to test how clean you are, uh, in the cart are these things. Body cam, which is about the size of a die and has two buttons on it and a lens. A button on the back, a button on the side, and a lens. There is an ILTR, which is about the size of an egg for the loyalty officer. You guys are familiar with those. It is a ILTR2. It's the kind that can actually record audio. There is an SCS Model 6, which you know your hygiene officer usually has. Kind of a belt with about a two inch, three inch metal extrusion from it coming off of it. Now, these items you might want to leave behind or take with you depending on, you know, you need to hide them because if someone finds them, they'll know you're troubleshooters and that will give away the fact that you're on a mission and not who you say you are. But these things are given to you. There are 20 easy does it's to divide as the team leader sees fit. An MTK cool toolkit for your equipment officer if he wishes to carry that around even though he left to hide that. It's a caboodle sized toolkit. Well, the caboodles are generally pretty big. Hiding it might be like difficult, so you might want to either take some tools out and put them in your utility belt and leave the toolkit behind. You guys get five cans of a discontinued experimental B3 drink known as B3 Whoop-Ass. Wow. Nope. Uh, we get three cans of Whoop-Ass? The soda. Would someone like to roll biochemical therapy to know what you know about this B3 Whoop-Ass? I rolled a three. I did not roll lower in my number, so that's a fail. I get out. I get out. Alright, so only Gibson has heard of this Whoop-Ass before. They tested it a lot among insect originally, which is probably why you heard about it, but it tends to cause rage among users. People that drink it tend to get violently angry does increase their fighting ability. So while they get violently angry, it does make them, like, stronger. You're also given five wider awakes. Team leader, you can distribute this equipment as you wish. The tiny uh, camera you guys have initiated, I don't know, leader hasn't given it to you yet, but uh, the briefing officer will inform you that it's an insect R&D development, so you guys can hide it on your person. It's like I said, about the size of a dice. But you operate it. Don't block the lens, of course. One of the buttons does video recording. You have to hold the button down to record. It only holds about 20 to 30 minutes worth of video, so be selective of what you record. One of the briefing officers, the lady, will speak up and say, uh, for the sake of HPDMC, get good footage. We might be able to use it for some higher clearance programming on vid screen. Get good footage if you can, and you'll be rewarded if you're HPDMC or be good for that department. On the button on the other side, take pictures, but that will reduce the amount of time you can record. And once you reach your max recording, it'll start recording over itself, so be careful. No badge no comm links, because comm links might blow your cover. You got your body cam, your ILTR, which is an egg-sized recorder for usually for your loyalty officer, but your team leader, that's your call. An SCS Model 6, which usually goes to your hygiene officer, but that's also your call. 20 Easy Does It's, Tool Kit, and the Whoop Asses, and the Wider Awakes. You decide who gets what. Yeah, so obviously the video 
promo officer going to get the, what is it, the ILTR, the multi-quarter? So you want to give the body cam to your recording officer, that's smart. Yeah, there's the multi-quarter body cam and then there's the ILTR. Yeah, it's two different things. Yeah. Alright, so both of those will go to the uh, uh, Boyd's Game video com officer. The SCS Model 6, yes, goes to Love Art. I'm, I myself am going to take three cans of B3 whoop ass. The rest of the whoop ass is going to Matt. How many are that? Two. Two whoop asses for Matt. I'm going to take five of those of easy. Actually, fuck it. They're pills, right? They're real small. Yeah, it's super tiny. It's probably the easiest thing to hide. Right. I'm taking all the easy does it. All 20? All 20. Throwing those away for later? Yep. And the wider awakes? I'm going to take two and everybody else gets one. I guess I'm going to inquire from our briefing officers what else we need to know about this mission. You need to stealth away whatever equipment you have for troubleshooters so you don't get caught. So if you have an ILTR, if you have an SCS, if you have a multi quarter, you probably need to roll stealth to hide that on your person. I just put a natural 20 on my. I think your SCS 6. So yeah, that's like a belt with a metal thing attached to it. So where are you trying to hide it? It's obviously you're like putting it on you now so you have like a, a small boner all the time or something. Or where are you hiding it that it's failing? I'm probably Showing the boobs. to shove it into my shirt. Well, there's an obvious like extra lump in your boob now. So where I have it's like at. three boobs, so I would notice that, right? And well, like, oh. if, even if you don't, I think your other team members might. Turn back around and hold my hands up and go, eh? Then I guess they'll well, Luckily you guys are in a private room and I can keep yeah. trying to rehide this stuff until it succeeds. Okay, so I rolled an eight. Alright, so this is successful. Not very, but it's in your clothes now and less intrusive. I moved it around so it's kind of more underneath my boobs now yeah. rather than just like on top. So your equipment's delivered, the boss done it stuff, you've got your armbands. The briefing officers, for their last bit of this, now that you guys are all ready, they'll approve your appearance and all that stuff. They will warn you that an officer of INSEC is embedded within your group, and that INSEC has taken special measures to enhance teamwork performance, and to ensure that mission the mission will succeed. They will warn Mac personally, suspect in the dorm bombing may be present at this meeting. They've reviewed the footage that they have, and they don't think you're guilty, but if, if you spot anything suspicious or recognize anyone from your dorm that day of the explosion, Explosion. Tell your communications officers. These people are involved in a lot of nefarious activities. And they have an auto car called and ready for you, waiting outside this room. You guys can go to PLC first if you want to spend some money, but worry about it as per instructions, but this car is waiting here for you at this location. Does anybody want anything else? Go ahead. Do this. Everybody's good, we're just going. Let's go for it. Alright, let's roll out. Let's just go straight there. Waiting in the auto car is an orange insect officer with the classic shiny helmet. An insect goon of orange clearance, higher clearance than you guys, but he's operating the car to take you where you guys need to go. You guys hop in and are piloted very quickly around this sector, far away to an elevator, a black infrared marked elevator. This is good for you guys because these infrareds couldn't be seen in the red sector without getting busted. So you guys probably hurried into that car. It's probably smart you didn't go to PLC with a bunch of infrareds on the red sector. That would have blown your cover. Glad you guys didn't fuck that up. <laughs> So you guys are delivered to this elevator, and as long as you hurry to the elevator, no red officers will see you. You don't have to blow your cover or anything. So just hurry to the elevator and get in. You get taken down into the infrared area. You have instructions on how to get to this transport from here. This elevator actually takes you to an area pretty close to this transport. You're pretty far off now. You're in sort of a production district of a red zone, and so you know that below it in the infrared zone is also sort of like factories, HPDMC warehouses, things like that. So it's an industrial zone of this of your sector in the sector below. So anyone can activate this elevator if you like. You okay. need to hurry. Yeah, all right. So you hurry and swipe your car and use a tongue print. Let's get to it. So we hustle into the elevator. You're in the black elevator being taken down to a black industrial zone. Given instructions to catch a transport that is nearby. Once you get down there, you know where to go. It's a short distance from here. Yeah, a transbot, a transport. It's like a train car, either driven by a bot or in some areas where the tracks are worse driven manually. But it, they get a lot of hop on. So what you need to do is look for groups of mutants. They hop on a car, registered mutants, like you guys are, quotation marks for some of you. So you guys are right off in that area and you guys can either roll a stealth to or to stay hidden, or a surveillance to watch for these people, one of those two things. I will surveil. Five of eight. So you guys are able to surveil some mutants hopping transports. If you guys want to try to join this group of mute registered mutants, these ones all look infrared, hopping on a transport. If you want to follow them where they're going, these were your instructions, so hopefully these are the mutants you're looking for. You want to join them? Let's do that. Alright, you guys, run. Try to catch this train. I need an agility roll from all of you to hop onto this transport. Hop-ons. You're going to get a few hop-ons. Agility base, roll lower than your base. I failed. Did anyone succeed? I got a natural one. All right, so Macar is on that transport riding away. Anybody else catch I did it? Not succeed. All right, Macar, you're going to see that no one else in your team succeeded. You're on and they're not. Do you want to try to aid them anywhere or do you want to hop off and try to catch the next one? The only thing I have left that I brought with me besides fucking bunch of pills is my utility <laughs> belt. So I guess, yeah. I just that might be a, a dexterity. That's like hand eye coordination. Maybe like a dexterity to try to like throw that out and help somebody. Like, might still yeah, be a strength to reel them in. my arm extra reach. Like I'm throwing it out there so like my arm length 
plus another arm leaf, basically. Roll me a dexterity to see how well that goes, if you can, like, get it near somebody, at least, under your base. Oh. Belt's flailing around wildly in the air. You guys, like, you might try to grab, but it might also slap you in the face if you try to grab it. So it's kind of up to you guys if anyone wants to lunge for it. What are we, what are we rolling to grab it? Uh, that would be an agility again. Oh, Jesus. But it's moving faster than you can run. I'm going to call out to Matt Matt that's on the the train. Wait for us whenever he gets to his destination. We're going to... No, that's not it. I'm going to just motion him to jump off. If he can. Neither motions you to jump off. Would you like to agility roll to try to jump off the train or stay on the train? Yeah, jump off for me. I got a 16 and I had to get a 10. All right, so you do jump off, but you fall. Oh, I rolled a natural one, which is on the damage chart is actually the lowest. Which low okay, roll. So, so I don't. You don't take any damage. There are more transports coming if you want to try to catch more. They seem to be going the same direction at least. You can are keep an eye on that one. Direction? So if it veers off, you can just follow whatever track you need to follow. They're magnetic tracks. So even if you do veer off, maybe you can still follow that train. If you want to catch the next one. Yeah, we're gonna have to. All right, so roll another agility to catch the next transbot. Nope. Hang on. Are these transports not like stopping to pick up people, or are we? Stop or... They are not. These transbots are usually just used to move goods around. People use them by hopping on, but mostly they're designed to move goods around. And this is our only mode of transportation right now at the moment. So. I mean, you can request another car, but that might blow your cover because this is supposed to be like a clandestine thing. Everyone else is taking the, these transbots because it's taking you to an but area outside of computer control. Yeah, yeah. We could walk. This but that also looks mass suspicious. It also take a lot longer. Okay, so let's formulate a plan. There's like, a magnetic you're track. You're so you know which like direction it's going, like what area. It seems to be covering this whole industrial area. So it moves goods from all these different factories so, throughout Alpha Complex where they need to go. Okay, so if we ended up on different transports, we'll, we'll end up in different areas. So does anybody in this team know anything about the area and where we're going? Any potential rally points in case we get separated or some sort of uh, landmark that we can all focus on if we do get separated so we, that we can meet at? Can I roll surveillance to see if there is a landmark that I'm pretty sure all of us would? Because we'll probably all get separated. Fail. We can't all get on the same transport, which is probably unlucky. Uh, I guess the standing orders are just to make our way to this group of uh, suspicious mutants that we're supposed to surveil as best we can. The transports seem to be coming in pretty close a session. So yeah. as long as you either wait for one that mutants jump on and hope they're going where you're going, or hop on one that you can see another group of mutants, as long as you jump on one in quick succession. Try and follow this one group or wait till another group and try to get on with them. Well, I mean, just in the interest of time, I mean, we always want to complete our missions as expeditiously as possible. So maybe we just keep trying to jump on and we'll follow this initial group of mutants and then um, follow each other. Yeah, well, they're always moving too, right? So yeah. we can start... This seems to be like a quick succession, like, because this is a very production-heavy area. It seems like a lot of factors right. in this area. 20 to 100 people behind each other. In, like, the general direction. Yeah, you can easily follow. The they're all going one way. So... Yeah. That way we're still always traveling instead of just stand, standing there. I like that idea. Let's try and jump all jump on the next one. Alright, everybody roll an agility yeah. roll on the we train don't. behind the mutants to just follow. Yeah, the one that's right uh, behind the mutants. Fail. Fail. I rolled a 20. Uh, so did I. Two natural 20s? I got yeah. a natural 20 too. Oh, three natural 20s? That's not only a fail. That's, you three not only all fail, you all three fail and fall on the tracks, and there's another train right behind this one, only 20 feet behind. So now all three of you are on the tracks. Gibson, you didn't fail that bad, or you didn't roll a 20. No. So you see three of your allies on the tracks. There's a train coming. Oh. You guys have this round to get out of danger. I pull the pin on my grenade. <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> and I toss it right at him. <laughs> Alright, you toss a grenade. Roll me the grenade skill. I rolled a one. So, Gibson, RH, can you want launch the grenade right at you guys? It's gonna land. I'm just trying to blow up the train before it uh, can crush you guys. <laughs> The only roll that makes sense would be to try to get out of the way of the Yeah, server. you guys can roll agility to try to get out of the way. <laughs> what about strength to push myself off the ground? To- You're literally just like shoving yourself out of the way. I the two is successful. Like- I would like to do the same thing. I mean, I'm like a big lady, so Woo! I got a four in my strength. All right, so the two of you, by the way, my team leader is caught in the way of this grenade, of which damage I rolled an 18 on a D8, which will incapacitate your team leader. So your leader is wounded, prone, or unconscious. Take no action until healed 
to wounded status or better. So if he gets wounded again, your team leader will be dead. So your team leader is near death. Magnetic track now is exploded, causing all transports behind it to start backing up. Well, our team leader would want us to continue with the mission. That's very true. Can I carry the team leader? Okay. Yeah, and you can also roll you can also roll medical to try to help your team leader out or call a doc bot. I'm saying you have to. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been playing very long. Let's make sure you know your options. You, can, you can't do anything. He's unconscious. I'd like to step over and pick him up like a him up and get him out of the way of all these... Like a, like a bodyguard type thing? You can move him off the tracks at least, the magnetic I mean, track. I'd like to... Right, move him off the mag track, but no trains were coming anyway, they all got stopped by the explosion. Why? And then is Macrodose next to me whenever I'm carrying the leader back towards Gibson? You guys are in the same area and Gibson just launched a grenade, you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take a well, yeah, I, I just assume Gibson. we all rolled on the side at the same time of the track so, or whatever. As I'm walking, I'm holding Team Leader, I'm going to look back over my shoulder, and then go, ha <laughs> and look at Gibson, and then lay the Team Leader on the ground in front of us. You're all regrouped off the tracks now. Two of you escaped injury, but Team Leader not so much. And now all the trains can't go forward. Uh, what do we do with this? Clean him up, He's very dirty. He's covered in trampoline. He's really unhappy. Well, bloody, there's all bodily fluid everywhere. I guess this does follow your hospice idea. I know, he, like, got in the way of that Try a medical roll. Oh, I got a natural one! Oh, shit. Luckily for you, love our boy is somehow. Maybe it's your training from the army. You've got some. Oh, I am in the army. You're in the army. You've got some sort of like med training. You're able to patch up. You're able to remove the shrapnel, patch up the wounds well enough. But with that roll, I'll let you remove move him from inc incapacitated up to wounded. So you're still stunned for one round. So for one round, you can't move. Still prone. All your skills are reduced by four. I mean, super bloody, right? So he's obviously. Well, if you test him now, he'll probably fail. Yeah. So do you want him to fail a hygiene test, or do you want to just clean him up out of your own goodwill? He's got wounds, like he's definitely going to need to see a doc after this mission. His clothes are a little bloody, but he's red clearance, so it just matches his outfit. Really You've done good enough that he can move around after a moment. He needs a moment to recover. All of his skills are reduced by four, so you make it harder for him to roll. Like Unless you heal him better, for the rest of this mission, all of his skills are going to be harder for him to roll. So I'm going to look at Gibson and say, I can't tell if he's going to be really angry with you or not. Curse. You're going to like hold yourself. All your skills are reduced by four, but you can move around and talk and stuff after two. What happened? Who got me off? What, like, how did I get off those tracks? The last thing I remember was uh, an incendiary uh, flying through the air, and then there was a big bang. Who wants bang. credit for saving the team leader? It was Love R. You know, we all got off, and she, she had the wherewithal to uh, be able to turn around and grab you before uh, she successfully got off. I'm gonna and due to her uh, experience in the military, she was able to patch you up. Wholeheartedly thank Lavar for her quick thinking. After thanking Lavar, I'm gonna make it a point to look at Gibson and say, next time, grenades aren't the best way to stop transports for us. <laughs> Gibson chuckles and gestures back to where all the transports are backing up and says, I beg to differ, team leader. A small group, one red and three or four infrareds, is follow the magnetic trip past some of these factories. And now we have a trail follow. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant yeah. plan. Do you guys want to roll surveillance to follow them at a safe distance, or do you want to try and join this group? I'll surveil them. Yeah, let's, let's try and surveil them. Seven out of eight. That's good enough. So you guys will follow at a safe distance on foot as a group of mutants to their destination. It takes a lot longer than it would have had you guys ridden in transport. My destined following with the team leader are a little battered up. You guys follow as fast as you can behind this group. It takes a while, but you reach what seems to be a HPDMC studio that is closed. There's red tape over the black door for repair, but the black door has been partially opened. Sort of like a third of the way enough for most of you to squeeze through. Outside the door, there are three registered mutants, all red clearance. One really large fellow blocking the small gap in the closed off door. That's obviously closed, this area is closed for cleaning, but you're inside of it. You can see through the door, although barely because big guys blocking it. There is a large group inside, mostly infrared, but there are some red uniforms. They're hard to see through this big guy. And on either side of this big guy are two small, much smaller guys, also in red uniforms. And the group of mutants before you, you saw them talk to this group get searched and then go in. You guys were a safe distance behind, so you saw the whole process. You don't know what was said. We're close enough for that. Kind of get patted down and then get let inside. I have a plan. We go up to the entrance. 
I'm not sure we should split up or what. Tell you what, we're gonna split into two groups. Gibson and Mac are gonna go in after us. Me and Love are gonna go in first. I really think that these Reds are gonna let a couple infrared past Team Leader. Selflessly volunteer to check it out before I get there. Sure, and yep. Very noble of you. I think that's a good idea. Alright, do you wanna send Gibson alone or are you still gonna do your Gibson Mac split and have them go first? I don't wanna send them in without back backup, so Gibson and Mac, let's, let's do that. Alright, Gibson and Mac, you'll approach first and you'll stay a safe distance behind and walk up yeah. afterwards. No one is the wiser. Hey, Gibson, maybe you should turn on one of your recording devices. Oh, the ILTR but, maybe. But also, hey. I, did a, I did a wink at him. <laughs> as long as they're stealth, you, mean, you might have to take it out to do that. See, so I want to do that before you approach. Activate either one of them, then re-stealth it. I'll stealth the ILTR. Once you've activated it, it pretty much records all audio. It may be muffled depending where you hide it, but it will record all audio from where you know from wherever it's stored away. So roll me a stealth check and tell me where you hide it away before you approach this. Bodyguards. Uh, six out of seven, and I uh, put it in my butt. You boof the LTR. You got an egg on your butt. Hopefully, it doesn't distort the sound too much. But it's at least hidden. You at least try to hide it for now. Oh, Lord, That's just high enough above the number that it is hidden. So unless they decide to check your butt, which we'll see. Uh, <laughs> should be good. It's prairie dog, but it's in there. So you guys reach the door. The big guy like crosses his arms. Is obviously blocking the doors. Not let you farther. The two smaller folks on the other side of the the larger guy don't say anything out loud, but you both hear a voice in your head. Hey Reggie, welcome to Fracas Crew. You here for a fracas? Raise your hand if you're ready for a fracas. Yeah, I, I raise my hand. Ready for a fracas. See both to raise our hands. Raise your other hand if you're ready to be searched. Yeah, I'll raise my other hand because I'm ready to be searched. Raise my other hand. They nod at the bigger guy in the middle, and with his big fat sausage fingers, he starts to feel you up. Now we get to roll feel up numbers to see if I find any of your contraband that you might have hidden on yourself. It's like airport security. I'll get a belt since I have more risk. You have to roll a 19, which is definitely a fail feeling that he doesn't find anything on you. Your boofing works. So everything you had hidden on you is successfully still hidden. Balls. Matt, for you, I rolled a two, though. Two whoop asses, my one wider awake, and then two easy dozens for my own personal sash. All right, roll me a motivation. It's under Hutzpah. Roll me a motivation skill check. Well, okay. I got a four. I need Five. All right, so that's good enough. So you can tell this guy, he's found this contraband on you. It's probably more pills than infrared should have. You get a sense of this guy that you could probably bribe him if you get the idea that if you can make him an offer and maybe you can get away with it. My with a bribery brain, roll. Also, in my brain, also be like, well, one of them reads He's not the, you don't get the idea that he's the one reading your brain. From the looks um, of the other guys, you feel like it's probably the two guys on the side. While they're patting me down, if they want to stealthily take so you want to think in your mind if you guys want some, you can have some. So the big guy's gonna kind of uh, hold this stuff yeah. in his hands. The two guys from the side will take one pill out of his hand each and nod at the big guy, who will also take one pill. But the rest is given back. You get to keep your whoop ass, but all three of your pills are gone now. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I mean, it looks just like regular B3 in the black can, and it says whoop ass, but it says whoop ass in black letters, so it's hard to read. Maybe it looks any different than a regular B3. Your marketing. You get in with your two uh, cans of lip ass and no pills. You're let in. The big guy moves out of the way. Yeah. You're in. You see them get in then there, team leader. They're both inside. So we're going to wait a period of time to make it not look suspicious like we were with these guys. And then I'm going to look to love and say, hey, you ready? Looks like those guys were searched. You think you can pass a search into this? No, I could not pass a search. I've got this hygiene kit on me. Ditch it or try to re-stealth it. I mean, well, like for uh, Gibson, so I'd like to try and stealth while Love tries to stealth this thing away, Gibson and Mac will witness a very large crowd, more than 40 people, all registered mutants, mostly infrared with a few red clearance officers interspersed throughout, all milling about, none saying a word. Occasionally you'll see someone raise their hand and then put it down, that's all. There's nobody like proceeding over this effort? It's definitely like a clustered group of this mutants all like really close together. It's a very big room. It's, it looks like it was HP DMC studio, like a film studio that was closed down for some reason. There's like some burn marks on the wall, some action remains on the floor, so obviously, some kind of explosion happened here. It's been closed down for repairs and cleaning, and they are holding the secret meeting here. But they seem to be clustered together in the center of the room, very near each other for this, whatever's going on. Like I said, there's more than 40 people, like just a crowd. Can I use my telepathy to see if I can cast a sort of like shallow net? Telepathy's easier for one on one, but you can try to feel out things around you with a power roll. You have to subtract three from your power total to do that to get a feeler just around. Fine. Yeah, I rolled a 20. Alright, so you're gonna get a bunch of feedback and static and a whole bunch of thoughts at once because everyone's crowded together. Womp womp. Yeah, and it kind of even gives you a little headache. Now you're walking in this crowd, and you're kind of like holding the bridge of your nose from the pain of, of that try. There was just a lot of information at once. 
And at this point in time, we'll let Love try to hide her stuff. Stealth roll. Is it small enough to shove up my butt? I mean, how big is your butt? <laughs> Probably part on top that has the needle and stuff that actually does the cleanliness test. Probably butt plug-ish. It's the belt part that's gonna be hard shoving up there. Mm. Can I just wear oh, the belt like a regular belt? You can wear it. Like I said, like, it just looks like you have like a very small boner if you try to hide it under your clothes. Or like a tail if you hide it out back. I'd like to make it look like I have a very small boner. All right, it might, with your current haircut, you didn't, you didn't have any didn't have any tape to push down your boobs, but maybe, yeah, you can pull it off. Yeah, I didn't bind them. The computer doesn't make any mistakes. So let me just still check to have the tiny boner cleanliness device. Pardon my mutant power. Yeah, your mutant power is an always erect 3-inch penis. I'm a grower. <laughs> I rolled a 6, but my stealth is 10. It's so I there. successfully have a tiny boner. I yeah. will now roll a dexterity check and try and find it. I rolled high enough that's not because then he doesn't want to touch your little boner. So the big guy fills you up, doesn't find anything on you. So the team leader marches up to the door, wounded, like obviously like still bleeding, holding a wound in his chest. You hobble up to the, the security guard after love. He fills you up. He's gonna let you in. You're good to go. Yeah, it even kind of looks like he recognizes you, Nazi. You, you sort of recognize him as well. You've seen this guy around before. You're let in, no questions asked. All four of you are now amid this big crowd. You'll see that Mac and Gibson are closer to this crowd now, but you can walk over to it to the center of this very large room. If you'd like to reapproach your team members. But you, like I said, you'll notice that no one is talking. And people are raising their arms periodically. Occasionally, someone will raise their hand and then put it down, and that's all that happens. Nothing happens once they raise their hands? No, no, Not no. visibly, as far as you can tell, no. Why doesn't one of us just raise our hands? Do you want to say that out loud, or is this just a thought you're having? Do you just want to raise your own hand? That's yeah, I'm afraid I'm afraid so, I don't think any of us uh, Whenever you say that out loud, everyone turns to look at you, and everyone says, shh, simultaneously, and all of you in your head immediately hear, the first rule of Fracas Crew is you don't talk at Fracas Crew. I'm gonna look over at him kind of annoyed, like, yeah, dude, but with my eyebrows. I'll raise my hand. Raise your hand. What do you think about when you raise your hand? I was involved in that accident involving the transport with and I was wondering if there's a place around here to heal myself. That explains low turnout you hear in your brain. No one else hears this, only team leader. Bebop, you look around and it seems like a pretty large turnout. We do not offer medical care here. You require a doc bot, maybe you should head back up to Red Clearance, a citizen. That's only team leader got that information. No one else got anything else. But if you want to raise your hand, someone might reply to you. If anybody's looking my way, I'm going to give them some pointed looks without saying anything. Hopefully they'll interpret directly to follow my lead. I was definitely looking at Team Leader because he had his hand raised and I was like waiting to see what was going to happen. But I guess I can't tell that anything happened so I'm still just staring at him like what what's going on? I'm going to look at everybody and nod encouragingly. We're going to do the same. Everyone starts nodding. All right. I'm going to, my eyes are going to widen a whole bunch and I'm just going to go, uh-huh. <laughs> But not out loud, like... And then all of you here in your head, sounds like tonight's turnout might not be that great. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. If you're a Reggie, raise your hand. Gibson raises his hand. Every other person in this crowd is I'm raising gonna, their hand. I'm also gonna shoot my hand up. Yeah, I'm gonna raise my hand as well. We all raise our hands. Alright, all the hands are up. So in the silence, all of you here. The first rule of Fracas Crew is don't talk about Fracas Crew. The second rule of Fracas Crew... Nobody talk during fracas crew. That's the most important rule. No talking. All, communication, all communications handled through a third party. Raise your hand. Third rule of fracas crew. Registered mutants only. If you see someone without an armband, take them out. Rule number four of fracas crew. Only use powers against other registered mutants while in the ring. Using powers against others against their will is not a sign of respect and is not tolerated. Fifth rule of fracas crew, no weapons allowed. You can now lower your hand if you understand the rules of fracas crew. We all lower our hand. Gibson keeps his hand raised and then lowers it. I'm lower my hand. In your apprehension, you hear in your head, Gibson, if you have any questions, let us know now. Gibson thinks, when's the fracas start? As soon as the rules are established. Gibson lowers his hand. Let the fracas begin, you hear in your mind. And then you hear sort of a diatribe given by obviously a leader in this group. The voices change. So you heard it like a sort of like an announcer voice in your mind before. Now you're hearing a different voice, a, a more like leaderly, more charismatic voice. And it's going to just kind of give you the layout of what this group is all about. The mutants are stronger together. Reggies are treated as lower class citizens, treated poorly by the so-called normal citizens of Alpha Complex. And so here in Fracas Crew, every mutant has a chance to prove themselves worthy. Even you infrared mutants, registered mutants, the lowest of the low, here at Fracas Crew, in battle, prove your worth. Prove that you have value, you have power, and that you have worth. 
to not only this group, but to Free Computer and to, and to, you know, to the society as a whole. You can go from being a Reggie, you succeed in battle, you're given a mutant name. All tonight's challengers will be people that have succeeded in battle before that have mutant names, and if you want to challenge them, you can. If you succeed, you'll be escalated in this group up another level in their ranks and considered future Fracas crew missions if you decide to fight. So one by one, mutants will come forward, raise their hand to announce a fight. Someone can raise their hand to accept, and fights will go on. One-on-one -on -one fights, no weapons. You can use your mutant powers or just fist fight, whatever you want to do. Participating is encouraged in winning a fight. will gain you respect, earn you a mutant name. This will give you prestige among the mutant community. You know it among their secret group. So if you want to fight, raise your hand. Up in the ring comes a registered mutant known by the mutant name of Evixor. So you guys all hear the announcer voice again. Challenger Evixor enters the ring looking for anyone that would like to challenge Evixor. Do any of you want to volunteer? Because if not, some other hands might shoot up. But if you hurry, your hand can go up first. Gibson raises his hand. Gibson would like to challenge Evixor in the ring. Oh, they like your spirit. Can That's I always a good the, sign. Can um, Arsenio Hall? Yeah, but quietly. You just like. Yeah, do I'm the, not doing the whoop. You do the whoop. I'm just doing the hand thing. Or um, this goes underway, and, and perhaps Gibson walks away towards the ring. I reach out, kind of like because we're all you know surrounded. You're very close together. Yeah, you're smushed. Like I like it. I like reach out and hand him one of the cans that I still have of whoop ass to see if he wants that. Gibson uh, nods. He, he seems very appreciative of uh, the help from uh, his buddy Matt Carr. All right, so you take the soda. Yeah. Stick it in one of your pockets. Do you crack it right away? Crack it right away. In the silence of all the like, no one's talking, of course. So. This, the kach of you drinking a soda before you're in the ring, you chug what this looks to everyone else in the crowd unless they observe closely the black on black can or read the writing. This looks like a normal, normal classic B3. You chug that real quick before you get in the ring? Oh yeah. I need you to roll an endurance. Can I get oh, as close as possible? Yeah, you can to push like, your way in front. My way. Yeah, okay. if you would like to help me in the front, roll I'm straight. I'm gonna do that. I wanna be real close. I got a 17 and my strength is an 18. So you have a hard time, but you just make it there slowly. They let Gibson through very easily and you guys were near him, so maybe you can, you followed behind him very quickly before the crowd closed back in. What was your endurance roll, Gibson? I succeeded. By how much? Eight. All right, that's very good. So for the next five minutes, you get a plus five to your damage total. So instead of five impact damage, you will do 10 impact damage, which is a lot. But also, you're going to be raging, quick to anger. You want to fight right now. Now that you've drank this drink, you're, you want to start punching someone almost immediately. This effect lasts for about five minutes. At the end of five minutes, you're going to take a very small amount of damage. Because you rolled a high endurance, you only take D1. And you'll have an upset stomach. So you'll have an upset stomach and a little damage in five minutes. But for the next five minutes, you're fight ready. You do a lot more damage and you're angry as fuck as you enter the ring against Evixor. Hell yeah. Gibson, he, he jumps in, beating on his chest, looking positively fucking feral. Are you here in your head? Raise your hand once you're ready for the fight to begin. Gibson raises both his motherfucking hands. Evixor raises one of his and the fight begins. Everyone around, totally quiet, totally silent, watches this fight. And the fight has begun. I'm gonna punch Evixor right in the face. <laughs> I'm gonna use my mutant power successfully to dodge out of the way. Swing with both my fists and kick with one. Try to take this motherfucker off guard. He once again, it's like he knows what you're about to do, definitely moves out of the way a second before you are able to pull off your move. I started to get pissed at this, but I realized that he's using, uh, he, he's gotta be using something. Yeah, no, I'll lash out with a fist, but as I do so, I'd like to use my power to see where he's going to dodge to and then hit him there. So I'm going to use your telepathy <laughs> to like read his, you want to read, you want to read his mind. So roll your power roll, um, subtract, we'll say two. I succeeded with a differential of 11. Oh, that's a very good success. So subtract two from that, and you successfully are able to land that punch. You're able to read his mind as he's trying to precog to dodge you. <laughs> so you adjust to his precognition and hit him. Hell yeah. He tries to kick you in the nards, it just barely lands. That was a soft kick in the nards. A little, like, foot tap on the nuts there. Yeah, I'll try to headbutt him. I have another successful power roll, so he backs his head up. I'll try to trip him. I have another successful power roll, so he, like, jumps over your trip. Kick him full on in his fucking nards. So he's, like, dancing around you. It's making you look foolish. You're like, and you're super pissed. You're drinking this rage drink. You're only getting angrier every time you miss. That's the thing. You just keep getting angrier and angrier. The rage is building inside of you because of this formula you drank. And your just natural rage, I'm sure. This is being amplified. Stay calm, loyal citizen. And remember, listening to the next episode of Dungeon Complex is mandatory. This episode of Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater was sponsored by our fans and friends on Patreon. Donate today. Keep Long Distance Dungeons & Dragons Dinner Theater alive.